hello students uh, let us have uh, let me have some, to say something about physical interpretation of uh, uh, of the of the wave function and certainly uh, it would be interesting uh, to interpret this wave function psi uh, that that appears in that appears in schrodinger's wave equation if i write down uh, time independent Schrodinger wave equation for the time being. So, so the psi that we have uh, is the wave function, right? And and this wave function that's appearing in in the Schrodinger's equation, uh, it it is it is interesting to interpret this wave function. And, and physically, in terms of the, the observable properties of the system. Now, in the beginning, it was considered that the wave function psi is, uh, it's, it's merely an auxiliary mathematical quantity. Auxiliary mathematical quantity. And and this mathematical quantity is simply employed to, to facilitate uh, computations uh, relative to, to some experimental results. This is certainly true. Uh, this is true and, and certain uh, to a to certain ex extent uh, of cases. For example, uh, if we take an example of calculating the, the intensity of waves. intensity of waves that are that are scattered are scattered by 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 crystals in the direction of the detector but it does not seem reasonable here to, to introduce an isolated mathematical function without inquiring uh, uh, its physical significance and even Schrodinger, Sch Schrodinger himself uh, attempted uh, the, the physical interpretation of this psi in terms of charge density. Tried it in terms of charge density. And uh, as the beam of electrons, uh, they, they exhibit uh, a diffraction phenomenon like, like X-rays. One might, uh, one might use the, the optical analogy to, to arrive at the physical significance of psi that I'm talking about. So, uh, in electromagnetic wave systems, if this A that we started with, that A as uh, uh, this A, uh, uh, if this uh, A is the amplitude of the wave, then, then the energy density, or, or I should say, energy per unit volume, uh, is simply equal to a square. So, so the number of uh, photons uh, per unit volume uh, uh, that we have, uh, if I talk in terms of photon density uh, for 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 the for the square of this this amplitude. This photon density will be what? Uh, it will be uh, it will be photon photon density. Uh, it will be a square by h nu. Where this this h nu is the, is the energy of photon, and and this means uh, that the volume. This means that this this photon density that we are talking about. Is, is proportional uh, to a square. It is proportional to a square because this this h nu is a constant. So if we if we if we if by analogy if if I replace this uh, uh, what I call as uh, if I replace this amplitude by by a function psi. Uh, and and if this psi is is the amplitude of the matter wave, amplitude of matter wave, 
the de Broglie matter wave that I'm talking about. At any point in, in space, then the number of material particles per unit volume, uh, uh, that, that's the particle density, if, if I have to talk about here, particle density must be psi square. Thus, the, the square of absolute value of, of this psi, uh, what is taken as the mod of psi square, is, is giving us the, the measure of the particle density. It's giving us the measure of the particle density. Particle density. Now, if, suppose, uh, if I take Q, uh, Q is the charge, it's the electric charge on a particle. The charge density will be equal to, to, to the product of uh, the charge Q and the particle density. The charge Q and the particle density. That will, uh, uh, that, uh, that will give me, uh, that will give me, uh, that will give me the charge density. Thus, this quantity that I'm talking about, psi, psi square, is basically a measure of charge density as Schrodinger considered it. And usually this psi star psi uh, is written instead of the, the, the more of this psi square. Why this psi star that we have, uh, it's the complex conjugate of psi. It is the complex conjugate of the psi. So psi star is, is complex conjugate of, of psi. And this interpretation uh, uh, was found to lead very satisfactory results. Uh, when wave mechanics was, uh, when it was applied uh, to, to the directional distribution of photons or electrons, intensity distributions like Compton scattering, intensity distribution like Compton scattering. The stable states of Bohr atom, the, the emission of spectral lines. So this interpretation worked well in those domains. But the difficulty that arises is when we wish to, when we wish to follow the, the flight of a single electron. The flight of a single electron. Or any other material particle that, that, that we, are, we have quantum mechanical in nature. The wave pocket associated with the material uh, particle dissipates in the course of time. So that it, it cannot represent for long the material particle. Which, is, which, which basically maintains its identity. In such cases, it's natural to ask, where is the particle in relation to the wave packet? Where is the particle? Where is the particle in relation to in relation to to the wave packet that we are talking about? It's somewhere in the wave packet. So to to remove this kind of discrepancy, another physical interpretation of the wave function was given. And this interpretation is generally accepted at present times. And this was suggested by, by Max Bohr. He came up with, with, with another interpretation of, uh, of wave function. in 1926 and then developed by it was later on developed by Bohr, uh, Dirac, 
Heisenberg, and others. Now, according to this view, according to the according to Max Born point of view, this psi psi star, or the the more of psi star, it represents the probability density of the particle. It it represents the probability density of the particle in the state of psi the state of psi. Then the, the probability of finding the particle in some volume that we have, say that volume is d tau, that is dx, dy, dz, about any point r at time t can be expressed as p of r d of tau is psi of r t mod whole square d tau. The function psi that we have here is sometimes called as probability amplitude. It's called as probability amplitude for the position of the particle. And, and the postulates suggested by Max Born show that the quantum mechanical laws and the results of their, their, their measurements can, be, can certainly be interpreted on the basis of probability considerations, on the basis of probability amplitudes. That's it.